Now, we can do things with vectors mathematically. We can add them, for example. And adding vectors graphically is quite straightforward. We just connect them head to tail in any order. So for our vector g here, which is part of my final vector I'm going to end up with, where I'm going to add this vector s together to get the vector g plus s, we see that we just join these two vectors head to tail here to get the final vector g plus s. And it does not matter what order we do this in. So we could start with the vector s and then add the vector g and we would still get the same vector g plus s. We can add vectors algebraically instead of graphically and then the way to do it is to add them component by component. So g plus s is this set of the three components of the vector g plus this set of the three components of the vector s and then we add together the components in each of the directions. And we can see this graphically here. Here is our first component of the vector g along the x direction, the direction of the unit vector i. Here is our component of the vector s along the x direction. Note that in this particular case it happens to be going in the other direction. So the net vector, the resulting vector from adding these two components along the x direction together, is this final vector here. Then similarly we can do the same thing in the y direction. So here's our component of vector g in the y direction. Here's our component of vector s. We add the two of those together to get the net vector in the direction j, or the, the y-axis. And then similarly, we're going to go along the z-axis now. And we have to remember we're looking in a perspective diagram. So this is a z direction, this is a y direction, this is an x direction. So here's our component of vector g along the z direction. And then we add our component of vector s along the z direction. And in this case, it happens to be going in the opposite direction. So the net vector along the z direction is this short arrow here. And adding all those together gives us our total vector g plus s that we have added component by component to get our final result. Now, having added vectors, we want to know if we can multiply vectors. And this turns out to be somewhat more complicated. There are two kinds of multiplications or products that we can do for geometrical vectors. The first is called the dot product, A dot B. And that gives us a scalar result. It gives us a simple number. The cross product, however, A cross B, gives us a vector. Now note here, in contrast to what we did with numbers, the dot here and the cross mean different kinds of multiplication. So let's look first at the vector dot product. A formula for the vector dot product is a dot b is given by the modulus of a, which we'll see as the length, times the modulus of b, which we'll see as the length of the b vector, times the cosine of the angle between them, or equivalently, a, b, cosine theta, where a and b are the lengths of the two vectors. The modulus sign here means that we take the length of the vector a, we'll define that as what we mean by this modulus notation, just as we used up here, and note incidentally that a dot b is equal to b dot a. So this dot product is commutative. Also, a dot a is simply equal to a squared. And that means that the square root of a dot a is the length of the vector a. If we look at this product here, a b cos theta, we can see that we can regard it as the projection of vector b onto direction a. So here's our line projecting down with a right angle in the corner here multiplied by the length of a, because b cos theta is the projection 
of B onto A in terms of length. Equivalently, we can regard it as the projection of vector A onto the direction of vector B multiplied by the length of B. We can see this formula can be looked at either way. Note incidentally that for two vectors at right angles to one another, that is where the angle here is pi by 2, then cos of pi by 2 is equal to 0, and so the dot product is equal to 0 as well. So for all of these unit vectors, which are all orthogonal to one another, then all of their dot products with one another are 0. So i dot j is equal to 0 because i and j are orthogonal. And so on for all of the others of these dot products of vectors that are orthogonal to one another, these unit vectors. Also, since these are unit vectors, the dot product of a vector with itself is just 1. Because all of these dot products are 0 for vectors with other ones of the unit vector directions, we can form the dot product algebraically in the following way. So we take a dot b, so it's this set of components here dot producted into this set of components. But when we do that, all we're left with is ax times bx plus ay times by plus az times bz. Because all of the cross terms, for example, axi dotted into byj, all go to zero because i dot j is equal to zero. So the dot product can be written in this form. It's a nice equivalent algebraic form for the dot product. The components of a vector, therefore, can be found by taking the dot product with the unit vectors along the coordinate directions. So here we've got g dot producted with this vector i here gives us the result gx. The only term that survives out of this product is the gx itself. Now, the other kind of vector product is called a vector cross product. And for two vectors, which we'll write out here in terms of components, the two vectors with an angle theta between them, the vector cross product, it looks superficially a little like the dot product. It's got the magnitude of A and the magnitude of B and instead of the cosine theta, it's got sine theta. But one very important difference is that this is a vector, and there's a unit vector n that multiplies this result. So we have a, b, sine theta, but it's a vector in the direction n. And you might ask, what's the direction of that vector? Well, the answer is it's given by what's called the right-hand screw rule. The first and most important aspect about that vector, though, is that it is orthogonal to both A and B. It's at right angles to both A and B. And if you look at this picture here, you will see that that means it either has to point into the picture or it has to point out of the picture. And which one of those it does is determined by the right-hand screw rule. So here's a way of envisioning the right-hand screw rule. We imagine we have our two vectors here, and we're going to start out with a handle of a corkscrew lined up along the direction of the vector A. A corkscrew is one of those objects that you can screw into the cork in the top of a bottle, and when you've done that and you pull it, you can take the cork out. And then we imagine that we turn that handle so that it lines up now with the direction b. The direction of the vector n is the direction that the corkscrew shaft moved in, the corkscrew screw. So if when we rotated from a to b, the corkscrew goes forwards into the diagram, then the direction of the vector n is forwards into the diagram, and that's what would happen with the right-hand screw rule. 
If on the other hand we were going in the other direction, if A was down here and B was up there, then the result of rotating the corkscrew in this direction would actually be to be taking it out of the cork. The direction N would then be pointing towards you because the corkscrew would be moving towards you. So I have here a corkscrew. This is the usual implement you use to take the cork out of a bottle. You screw it into the, the neck of the bottle, into the cork, and you pull to take out the cork. Now, this has a right-handed thread, which means that as I rotate it clockwise for me, it moves forward. If I rotate it anti-clockwise for me, it moves backward. This looks anti-clockwise to you, and it looks as if it's moving backwards in towards you. So this is the same no matter whether you're looking at it or I'm looking at it. It still behaves as a right-hand screw. And the right-hand screw rule for something like a vector is that if I start out with this handle of the corkscrew oriented, say, along the vector A, and I rotate that clockwise, for example, to get to some other vector direction B, the screw is moving in that direction. So the direction of the normal, the n vector, is in this direction in the right-hand screw rule as I do A cross B. If, on the other hand, I was doing B cross A, I would start out in the B direction, and I would rotate it anticlockwise to get back to the A direction. So that means, in that case, the normal direction is pointing this way the cross product would point in the opposite direction if I do B cross A instead of A cross B. Now, a very important part of the discussion of these vector cross products is that they are not commutative. A cross B is equal to minus B cross A because of this screw rule definition and the resulting direction of the vector N. So if you have to turn clockwise to go from A to B, so the corkscrew goes in, then N points inwards. And if we have to turn anticlockwise to go from B to A, so the corkscrew goes out, so N points outwards. And that is the sense in which A cross B is equal to minus B cross A. It's because the vector direction N is pointing in the opposite direction in both of those two cases. We can write the vector cross product in an algebraic form, and I'll just state that for you here. So in terms of the components of the vector, the resulting cross product here is a vector, so we've got vector directions i, j, and k. And note that the result for the length of the component pointing along the direction i involves only the components in the other directions. So it involves the components in the y and z directions to give us the length of the resulting cross product in the x direction. And you see the same behavior in each of the other components. A shorthand way of writing this is to use the same notation as we use for what's called the determinant in matrices. And at the moment, you can regard this statement here as being equivalent to this one. If you know what matrix determinants look like, then you will understand that these two are the same. But for the moment, we'll just regard this and this as being equivalent notations. They are exactly equal. Mm -hmm.